Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller. I'm the creator of the Divi Contact Form Helper plugin. Today, I'm so excited to share a huge update. It's going to be version 1.7, and there are just so many new features that I have to tell you about. A lot of things related to spam protection. We have user roles, we have a star rating field, we have a number formatting field, um, and a bunch of other things I'm not remembering. So let's take a look at everything that's new. I highly recommend coming over to the blog post. It will just give you the screenshots and the explanation of everything that's new and a nice summary. So let's just go down through here. So we definitely have a lot of new spam protection features. We have added Cloudflare Turnstile. And you may not be familiar with this. It's a fairly new one. So think of it as a CAPTCHA alternative. So you may be familiar with like the Google um, reCAPTCHA that's built into the Divi contact form. Um, it's invisible. It works through like based on user interactions. It's trying to figure out is this like a spammy person like based on things you click and stuff. Okay, so Cloudflare Turnstile is a privacy focused alternative to that. And it's, it's made by Cloudflare and it's becoming really popular. So we have settings for this in the back end. In fact, can I just talk about two things at once here? Um, just because it'll make it easier. Second similar thing like that is we also added the Google reCAPTCHA version two with the check box. Okay, so again, the one built into Divi doesn't have the check box like, like this, right? I'm not a robot. You've seen that, you know, a hundred times. I'm not a robot and then you click that and then you can go. We've added that feature, okay? So we've added this or this. Now you wouldn't want to use them both together, but I'm just saying some people will prefer one or the other, especially privacy focused ones will prefer Cloudflare. Okay. All right, so go over here under Divi theme options, Divi contact form helper, spam protection, right? So here I have the keys already enabled and I'll show you, you know, where you can also enable that in the module. But for now, you would first want to enter them here. The reason we put them here is because if you have multiple contact forms where you want one of these, so if you want Cloudflare turnstile on multiple contact forms, now you can just enter them the site key and the secret key here in the theme options. Then when you go to the contact form, there it is. <laughs> so go in here to where you normally have spam protection, right? And so now we've added the new features, see right here, you would enable this here. So if you're going to use that, you first obviously have to put your key in the back end, but then that, okay, so hypothetically, let's say I wanted to use one form, I wanted to use this, and the other form I wanted to use this, right? Then on this form, I could enable this, and on the other form, I could enable this. Does that make sense? So it's kind of per module enabling it, but globally for the site in the back end, okay. And then don't forget, we also have our honeypot feature here. And this one is like the old, like the V3 for Divi, but this one is the V version two and Cloudflare. Okay, you got it. So really excited about that. Each of these will show up on the front end of your form like that or like that. Okay, next we expanded the blacklisting option. So right here, we used to have one field and we said you could put your email address or email address domains there meaning a specific email address, you know this is spam, I wanna block them, okay? That's what you'll put here, like a specific email address. Or if it's a specific domain, so like at you know spammer.com, then you put that here, right? Because that will block any coming from that, that domain, okay? That extension, no matter what, you know, they auto generate before the app. <laughs> okay, and for keywords, now this is if you wanna blacklist any form submission that has a specific keyword. So be careful with that, like don't overdo it, but there you go. Now what happens if any of these criteria are met, it will look like they're submitting the form on their page, like when they're actually you know, submitting the form, you just won't get it. It won't, it won't be added to your entries and you won't receive it, okay. So there you go, pretty cool. Re and even more, we added this option to mark as spam here. So if I am viewing, contact form entries here. Uh, let's say I'm viewing this one. 
And now I have this button to mark this email as spam. Now, when you do that, what it essentially does is takes this email address and puts it um, in the in the blacklisting. Okay, does that make sense? So by marking it as spam, it's actually think of it as putting it in the blacklisted. Okay. There's another spot for that in the entries. We also added like if you're doing multiple, right, at a time, we added it here. Mark email spam. So now we'll do it to like all three of those. Okay. So there you go. Pretty cool. Now here's something that's interesting. A customer pointed this out to us. They had this setting disabled in Divi, right? They, they, they were not using this, right? This here, this is what comes with Divi. They had this off and they noticed, Ooh, it was actually still sending a request to Google's website for like the fonts that were used in it. And so obviously that's against like the GDPR, you know, compliance regulations, all that stuff. We checked it out and now we added this setting in theme options. So back here where I was again, this is only for V3. So you, it's not disabling this, it's disabling, it's saying completely disable it. Meaning if you have this off, it's still not actually disabled completely. So you have to have this to actually completely disable it from sending that request. Okay. So I hope you appreciate that. Let's see what else we got. So, oh, user roles and permissions. So this was something that we kept getting asked about. Um, normally, you know, I would think that for a contact form, you would only have people with admin access wanting to view them. But I do understand there's cases where an editor or some other role would want to be able to view them here. Um, preferably, you would probably want to be getting an email, sending an email to this person, whoever this person is that works for you or whatever. Um, if you have a user role for them and you want them to be able to come in here and view the entry, that's great. Now you can do that. Or if you, maybe you want them to be able to view it, but not create a post or reply or any of these other things, delete it and stuff. Um, or maybe you don't want them, maybe you want them to view it, but not be able to export like entries to a CSV. Now you can handle all of that. I'll go back in here. We added a new tab right here, user permissions. And by default, it's going to look like that. Notice we don't have um, admin up here. Admin always has permission. We're not, just, we're not gonna take away admin permission for that. But for editor, let's say you have an editor and you, you want them to be able to access entries, there you go. Maybe you want them to delete them and all these things. Maybe you also want them to export. And maybe you have some contributor that you want to be able to do these things. You can do whatever you want. This will auto populate user roles on your website. So basically any plugin here that you can see is adding user roles or a user role uh, manager plugin will populate here. And then here's just like a summary of what the permissions are. Um, you can check that. So hope that uh, makes a lot of you happy. Oh, we also added this test email sending feature. Just interesting. Um, it's just going to send a test. Please read about this. This will explain what it's doing and why the test may or may not be accurate, but it's a good thing to do to test when you're setting up. Um, anytime you're sending messages from WordPress to an email address, you want to make sure you get those delivered properly. So we have that test tool. Um, we already had the SMTP settings here, of course. Um, yeah, read up on that, see how it works. Now we also added this star rating field. In fact, you can see it really clearly. It adds the star rating. I will show you that it's under. So if I added this one as a star rating, I put the label in there and then under field options, this is set to input field because we're not able to add more fields here at this point. And then down here, you just enable this setting use as star rating. And here is how it will look. So it'll look sort of grayed out like that. Right. And then when you hover over, see how you can like click wherever you click is like where it puts it. Okay, there you go. And that will submit and it'll be, you know, whatever these are like um, two or 2.5 or five. Okay. Here's another one you can mark as unread. We didn't have that before. Um, you had to um, go into each one to mark it as unread. Now you can mark any of them as unread. Here's an interesting feature. So some people use a form for collecting entries for something, a contest or uh, registration for something where there's only 50 allowed or 10 allowed. 
Well, here's the cool thing. Um, we actually have a surprising number of people ask this. So now you can limit the number of entries that it receives. Um, so you turn the setting on and then you set the maximum number. And then here you set the message for like, if that's reached. So if, if you've had it set to 10 and now I'm the 11th person to try to submit this, it will say a message like, we're sorry, we already have, you know, our 10 and whatever. Okay. Phone number formatting. Here's kind of the last feature that I want to highlight. Um, a, a very surprising number of people wanted this. Instead of just putting in your number, people were asking for formatting. And I get it. I, I really do. It's a, it's a great idea. Now, I'll just show you on the front end here. Notice there's like a little plus and then a field and then I have the parentheses and then some more underlines and a dash. All right, so if, if this is me, you know, and I'm gonna put in my number. So in America, it's a country code one and then maybe one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, right? And it automatically filled in. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? I think so. So it automatically puts in where you need it. Now in the back end, I actually have set up this formula or pattern, whatever we're calling that. All right, so I'll go into this field right here, edit, and then go to field options. And it's set to input field again. Um, right here, you can see custom phone number formatting. See, that was normally off. But if I enable that, here you can see the pattern that I have set. And that's, remember how it was showing? Each one of these X's was an, like an underscore showing. I have this explained here. Enter, enter a specific phone number format you want to use, and please follow this format. So in my case, I wanted there to be a plus sign, and then I wanted it to be an X. So every X is going to be a number. So whatever you wanted to put there, you could write whatever you wanted there, but then each X is where the number will fill in. So I wanted parentheses. Maybe you don't want parentheses. Maybe you want it to be uh, XXX dash like that and maybe you want it to be like that and I'll show you and there you can see so now when I type see that and now that's how it's going to format it that does bring me to the end of the features we're highlighting there's other features on the change log that we've added and a lot of improvements this actually is a really big update we actually made some core changes to like our uh, merge tag to the all the all fields merge tag. So actually, I highly recommend testing this on a staging site, um, especially if you're using that. And let's see, we also added the merge tag for linking to your files. That was a big request. Um, there's other fixes to the ICS uh, synchronization, like when you're for the booking, for the date picker, other improvements to that and different things. So yeah, this is a huge update. We were already at 100 and one features before this update. So I didn't I didn't even count what we're at now. Um, I have to go through and like count how many features we just added and I'll update our chart and our documentation. Um, I really hope you enjoy this. This plugin is so popular and it's so exciting seeing how many people love it. If you do love it, honestly, I really need more reviews for this so that people see it. We have, you know, tens of thousands of people using it, but we don't have that many reviews. Like everyone loves it. Everyone like every time I get a message, it's like, oh, I just love this plugin. But we need more reviews. Um, that actually really helps a small business like this. We just spent, you know, tens of thousands of dollars creating this update. So we need um, reviews to help other people see that, hey, this is an awesome plugin. All right. Okay. Enough of that. We do hope you enjoy it. And yeah, let us know what else you want to see next. And we'll see you in the next video.